Okay, motor operation. This is just the basics of induction motors, some of the things that go on inside the motors. We'll do a quick review here. If you remember right, the um, an induction motor has coils and a magnetic field is induced into those coils from the current flowing through them. And that magnetic field also induces a magnetic field into the rotor and it becomes magnetized and it's designed so that repels the eat they repel each other and that rotor spins inside and most of the motors that we have have what's called a shaded pole or a second winding to, to pull the rotor off center magnetically to allow it to begin its rotation if it doesn't have that we'll see what happens here in just a minute so if the motor's already spinning and the alternating current's going to con continue to make that stator spin inside or the rotor spin inside of the stator and that's that works just great except when we have our rotor stops and magnetically in line with the stator and if that happens those magnetic poles are going to shift back and forth but the, that that rotor is just going to sit there and hum it's not going to spin at all and there's nothing to get it started unless it, you have a fan blade or a pulley you can reach your hand in there and give it a spin and if you do that then you can get it to start until it stops on the next the uh, the next go round okay so that rotor will continue to spin and again once once that motor stops and doesn't have enough uh, magnet magnetic shift to to get it spinning it's just going to lock right up right here and, and then you're dead in the water. Okay so I want to take a look at what happens with a motor and and the power of a motor. What we have here are the sine waves that represent the the voltage and the current of the power that comes into the motor. So this is what would be coming out of the field wiring and the disconnect box. And for this example, we are going to use 100 volts and 10 amps. And we get our power from the combination of the voltage and the amperage. And when they're both at their peak like they are right here, we multiply the 10 amps times the 100 volts for 1000 watts of power. And that's what you want. You want to have your voltage and your current. That gives us 1000 watts of power available. And then on the down cycle here, this is also your max power. So we have 1000 watts available at this point. But what happens, and when the problem arises, is when we put a motor, an inductive load, especially an inductive motor, into the circuit. So this again is our power coming in. And it, everything is what's called in phase. So the peak of the current is at the same time as the peak of the voltage. Well, that coil of wire and the magnetic field that expands and contracts with the current going through it starts to shift things out of phase and in an inductive load it shifts the voltage ahead of the current and now what happens is we can't get our the peaks to line up anymore and we don't have a full thousand watts so if, if we take this example right here and we at our hundred volt point right here it no longer crosses the peak it crosses down here maybe at seven and a half amps and we only get 750 watts of power and that's not good when things are shifted out of phase then then we have a thousand watts of power available but only when things shift out of phase 750 watts of power that we can really use and that's not good. So what we do in this instance is we place a capacitor in 
in series with one of the um, windings and here's what happens if you remember from the sl previous slide we're over here and we shifted the voltage got shifted ahead of the current which reduces our power available well what a capacitor does is if you it shifts the current forward so if you can match the capacitor over here to the inductive load of the motor over here it's going to shift everything back into phase and, and bring it back into balance and that gives us the maximum amount of power for a motor so again inductive load it shifts the voltage forward out of phase if it's a straight capacitor it shifts it the voltage backwards out of phase and if if these are equal to each other in its their phase shifting capabilities it will make sure that the power that's available to the motor um, is always in phase and the maximum amount of power available okay so just to review the capacitors can be added to the motor to correct the phase shift and most often are with the bigger motors and we have uh, start capacitors also and that does the same thing it gives it maximum amount of power to the um, to the startup coil of the motor and then it's pulled out of the system once the um, motor has started and remember the primary purpose of the run capacitor it improves the power factor of the motor run capacitors are always in the circuit even when the motors running and this is why it's important when you're replacing capacitors uh, you need to be within 10 percent because if you or if you're 25 percent off on a capacitor it doesn't match that motor up and then you're reducing the power factor and operating efficiency of the motor and this is just a quick uh, overview of what happens in the with a start and run winding this just depicts this is not really how they're wired but this depicts and it shows that they are they're not they're, they're out of balance just a bit causes just a little bit of a shift in phase between the run and the start and and it's a magnetic shift and as a magnetic imbalance and it gives that rotor just the push it needs to get it going and as you can if you take a look at this diagram that's got the run and the start winding here but in reality the run winding is wound very close to in very close proximity to the start windings and they are designed and wound again once again so that they create a small shift of magnetic phase to get that uh, that rotor spinning okay so that's it so we'll get into in the next videos all the different types of motors how they operate and what you need to know for the Nate exam